Hey, welcome back to Memorable Neurology. Today we're going to be talking about the internal capsule. This will be a quick video, as the internal capsule isn't too complex. But make sure that you've watched the video about the basal ganglia first and have a good understanding of that. Let's zoom in to look at the internal capsule more closely. The internal capsule is named because it runs inside of some important surrounding structures, including parts of the basal ganglia, such as the caudate, putamen, and globus pallidus. Recall that the basal ganglia are a group of subcortical structures that help to refine movements traveling from the motor cortex down to the muscles. If you think about it, the basal ganglia are basically a bunch of bureaucrats. If left to their own devices, they would take the initial signal generated by the motor cortex and talk about it, debate it, and modify it until the cows come home, and the signal would never actually get to where it needs to go. However, what happens when the motor cortex gets fed up with all the bureaucracy and just wants to send a signal to the muscle it wants to? For this, the motor cortex has to send the signal through the internal capsule, a V-shaped collection of white matter that brazenly travels right through the middle of the basal ganglia on its way to the spinal cord, probably flashing a middle finger to onlookers while doing so, so it can travel to the muscles directly. The V-shape makes the internal capsule easy to split into three sections, the anterior limb, the posterior limb, and the genu, making up the bend between them. We'll start with the posterior limb. The posterior limb contains a pathway known as the corticospinal tract, so named because it carries motor impulses from the cortex to muscles throughout the body via the spinal cord. For this reason, an injury to the posterior limb of the internal capsule generally results in contralateral hemiparesis, or weakness of muscles on the opposite side of the body, or even hemiplegia, which is complete loss of movement, as in someone who is paraplegic or quadriplegic. You can remember the core function of the posterior limb of the internal capsule to bypass the bureaucracy of the basal ganglia by thinking of it as a policeman going rogue and flipping the bird to the basal ganglia as it drives by on its way to the spinal cord. The bend in the middle of the internal capsule is known as the genu, which is Latin for knee. Unlike the corticospinal tract, which travels to muscles in the body, the genu contains the corticobulbar tract, which travels to muscles in the face via the cranial nerves which branch off of the brainstem. You can remember the function of the corticobulbar tract by thinking of a genuius who gets an idea in their cranium. What happens? A light bulb goes on. This phrase will help you to associate the corticobulbar tract with the genu of the internal capsule in the cranial nerves. Finally, the anterior limb of the internal capsule contains a variety of nerve fibers connecting different parts of the brain, but honestly it doesn't really come up that much clinically, so we won't spend too much time on it. So to recap, the internal capsule bypasses the bureaucracy of the basal ganglia to go straight to the muscles in the rest of the body. The posterior limb contains the corticospinal tract, which goes to the body, while the genu contains the corticobulbar tract, which goes to the face. And that's it for the internal capsule. Subscribe to be notified when the next video comes out, and consider getting the book Memorable Neurology if you want practice questions and other ways to get more familiar with the material. Thanks for watching.